In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about probability trees and decision trees through a few worked examples. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So suppose a polygraph can detect 65% of lies, but inc incorrectly identifies 15% of true statements as lies. The company gives everyone a polygraph test asking, have you ever stolen anything from your place of work? Naturally, all applicants answer no, but the company has evidence to suggest that 5% of applicants are lying. And what they're asking us to do is construct a probability tree for this situation. So we can do that. So let's go ahead and start. So we have a decision node here, and this is where we have to decide, are we going to lie or are we going to tell the truth? And once we have either decided to lie or tell the truth at our chance nodes, what we have is two possible outcomes. The polygraph is either going to say polygraph, uh, polygraph says it's a truth or polygraph We'll say lie. Alternatively, when we tell the truth, one of two possible things is gonna happen. The polygraph is gonna say it's the truth, or the polygraph says it is a lie. So very quickly, we've constructed our decision tree. Now. We're not done because we have to fill in the corresponding probabilities, so let's do that. So we're told that um, the polygraph can detect 65% of lies incorrectly, but incorrectly identifies 15% of true statements as lies. So let's go ahead and make use of that information. So the polygraph can detect 65% of the lies. So that means when they lie, the polygraph will say lie 65% of the time which is 0 0.65. So for it to, the polygraph to tell the truth, because we remember that the sum of these probabilities across the branches must add up to one, one minus 0 0.65 is equal to 0 0.35. So 35% of the time when you lie, the polygraph is actually going to say you told the truth. We are told here that the polygraph also interprets 15% of true statements as lies. So this is this 15% right here, which means, whoops, 15% of true statements is lies. That goes right here. So that means that 1 minus 0 0.15 is equal to 0 0.85 which means that 85% of the time when you tell the truth, the polygraph will also say that you've told the truth. <clears throat> now, we need to figure out what percent of the time do our applicants lie versus tell the truth. Um, we're told that all applicants simply answer no. Of course, they would say that they've never stolen anything, but the company has evidence to suggest that 5% of applicants are lying, so 0.05 which means that 1 minus 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.95. So 95% of the applicants are telling the truth. Okay, let's erase some of these things just to clean up our workspace. So right there, we have successfully completed part A. That's a nicely constructed probability tree. So what is the probability that a random job applicant tells the truth and is cleared by the polygraph? Now there's only one possible route for this to happen. They have to tell the truth and they have to be cleared by the polygraph. So that must follow this branch. So to calculate the probability of that event occurring, all we're going to do is multiply across our branches. So we take 0 0.95, that's the probability that they tell the truth in the first place, times 0 0.85, which is the probability that the polygraph says that they've told the truth, which means that the probability of this event occurring is 0 0.85. 8075 or 80.75% of the time, a random job applicant will tell the truth 
and will be cleared by the polygraph. Okay, so that's easy enough. Let's jump into our next worked example here. So a clinical testing of chemical compounds for approval as drugs goes through three successive stages. A compound that fails in one phase does not proceed to subsequent phases. So in phase one, they test on 50 healthy adults to investigate possible side effects. 70% of compounds pass phase one to proceed to phase two. Phase two, we have 43% of compounds passing phase two to proceed to phase three. And in phase three, we see 67% of compounds pass phase three. Okay, so let's go ahead and construct our probability tree. So we're going to start with our decision node here, and this is kind of just to start clinical testing. So we enter into phase one. So we're gonna have a phase one, phase one pass, or alternatively, we're gonna have a phase one fail. If we have a phase one pass, we know that they're going to go on to phase two. So we're either going to have a phase two pass or a phase two fail. We know that if the compound fails phase one, it doesn't go to phase two, so it automatically fails, right? We'll just put this in quotations because it didn't actually go to phase two, but it still failed. If it passes phase two, we're either going to have a phase three pass or a phase three. Phase three fail. If it failed phase two, we know that it automatically fails phase three because it didn't even start, which means the phase one also is in the same boat of this kind of quote unquote fails. So we have the structure of our probability tree now nicely laid out, but let's work on filling in the corresponding probabilities. So let's go up here. So we're told that 70% of compounds pass phase one and proceed to phase two. So 0 0.70, which means that 1 minus 0 0.70 is equal to 0 0.30. So that means that 30% of compounds must fail phase one. In phase two, we're told that 43% of compounds pass phase two. So one minus 0 0.43 is equal to 0 0.57. So 57% of compounds that pass phase one ultimately fail phase two. And then in phase three, we say that 67% of compounds pass phase three, so 0 0.67, which means that 0 0.33, whoops, must fail phase three, right? One minus 0 0.67 is equal to 0 0.33. Now it's not absolutely critical for you to do this, but effectively a phase one fail, we go to this next kind of imaginary fail with a probability of one. We know that with certainty, there's no other options. Again, it happens here, probability of one with a probability of one. So if it fails phase two, it automatically quote unquote fails phase three. Okay, so this is our nicely constructed decision tree for this question. So what is the probability of a chemical compound passing all three phases of testing? Well, there's only one potential instance here where it passes all three phases. That's where we pass phase one, we pass phase two, and we pass phase three. So what we're going to do here, the probability pass all stages is equal to the probability that it passes the first phase times the probability that it passes the second phase 
times the probability that it passes the third phase. We're just multiplying across our branches. So 0 0.7 times 0 0.43 times 0 0.67, which gives us a probability of 0 0.2. 0.167 or approximately 0.2017 right if we want to round to four decimal points and there we've had it we've complete we've successfully answered this question we've expanded our decision tree to include uh, two different chance nodes so again just reviewing that for a second we have our decision point right here and then we have subsequent chance nodes at each one and we end with our terminal nodes which is the outcomes of each one of these. That's it for this video but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy consider showing your support by giving the video a like and if you still need more help with statistics then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.